Wow, yay, hi everybody. How are you? I hope that you've had a wonderful convention Saturday so far. My name is Kat Mint. I am a variety streamer on Twitch and on Saturdays I typically stream baking. Yeah, yeah, I've had this shirt, I've had this shirt since September actually. Um, if you attended in September and you saw the Yarn Tail stream, that was my first stream for CozyCon. So this is my second stream, and if you were there, it's wonderful to see you again, and if not, it's nice to meet you. So we're all here for cookies. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make, we're gonna make some classic, classic cookies. Hey, Clyde. Hi, everybody. Um, some people haven't seen them before. Like, here's my husband, Ryan. Hello, hello. <laughs> You're gonna be hearing him throughout the stream, probably. Um, he's never heard of these cookies before. They're plain, simple animal shapes that are frosted in either pink or white frosting, and they typically come in a pink bag. And they're just typically known as animal cookies, and multiple brands make them. They're kind of nostalgic. So, in an attempt to make a furry baking stream, I thought that this might be something nice to do with its touch of nostalgia and all. So, oh, thank you. I'm pretty fond of this overlay as well. This is my friend Swizzleby, our mixer. So you might hear me refer to Swizz every once in a while. Um, we've got things mixing in Swizz. We've got things in this bowl. We add the bowl into Swizz, and that's pretty much our dough. It's really, really simple. So first things first. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Hey, hey, kitchen. How you doing? Usually when I stream on Saturdays, um, people just chime in and say what they want, and I just, I do my thing and I bake whatever I'm baking that weekend and it works pretty nicely. So, this is our flour mixture. If you were to take this and combine it with your sugar, it would kind of be like a boxed cookie mix. So that's what we're gonna do first. We've got 140 and a half excuse me, grams of flour, which is about a cup and an eighth. This recipe, by the way, is on a site called Sally's Baking Recipes. It is the classic mini animal cookie recipe. So if you ever want to give it a go yourself, and you can check that out. It's over a hundred. I'm gonna do like 141 because this can't measure half grams anyway. I've really been trying to be like super precise with my baking lately. So, uh, we don't want that there, do we? I should move this over further. There we go. Hey, Katona, how are you doing? Katona is our official Mixy Mixy captain. It's, it's, it's totally out of context. It does not make sense right now, I know. <laughs> Ryan's laughing over there. <laughs> so to our flour, we add, I'll show you my, my measuring spoon cat family. Da, 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 da. Cat family measuring spoons. So we're going to take our half teaspoon. Oh, I'm doing well. I'm just streaming for a con and. <laughs> 
No, I'm I'm really happy. I um, I took a chance with applying, uh, especially with something like a bake stream. I wasn't sure if that would be interesting, and I'm just so 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 grateful to everyone at CozyCon and for being accepted to do this panel, and I'm really excited. I'm just waiting for the butter. <laughs> then we've got, we need our leavening, so a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. Small kitten. Get some baking powder. And and then we need an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take our kitten friend and kind of eyeball this. No, no. If I do it the other way, I'm gonna spill it everywhere. Eh, eh like that. That looks good. So if you've ever, if you've ever been to my baking streams before, this is the part where we say, whiskey, whiskey. We're just gonna whisk all this together. We're gonna basically turn it into cinnamon flour. It's actually, that's what it is. It's cinnamon flour with some leavening. So yeah, if you were to basically add sugar to this, it would essentially turn into like a boxed, pre-made cookie mix. There we go. So we're just gonna set this off over to the side because in the meantime, we're going to visit our friend Swizz over here. Hey, Spicy! We're gonna come over here and visit our friend Swizz, and we will add our butter. Are you locked? No, you're not. We add butter and sugar to this, and we're just gonna cream them together for a couple of minutes. If I can get the butter chunks out. We have a new microphone now, so hopefully there won't be a lot of noise when I turn this on. You don't have to tell me how it sounds. Butter chunks. How does it sound? Really? You can't tell? I don't have audio. Oh, you don't have this audio. not even he's listening he has different headphones on so really oh oh yay yay oh good it's been a consistent problem it's been a consistent problem uh with other microphones yeah wait grams grams all right so we need butter plus sugar, so we need 75 grams of sugar. Sixty-five. No! Can I pour it back in? <laughs> Seventy-three. Seventy-four, seventy-five, okay. So, here is the base of our cookie that we're gonna mix together. There we go. And to this we add all of our wet ingredients. It 
trying to set the bird. How's everybody been enjoying the con so far? I started logging on Twitch last night so I could hear some of the DJ sets. It's so good, so good. That's one thing that I like about um, listening to the DJ sets specifically at CozyCon because it really has that way of sort of taking me back to like the late night con experience. I guess maybe it's just because I like don't listen to a lot of dance music outside of cons. I listen to like, you know, K-pop and stuff and alternative rock. So it's a really nice way for me to feel like I'm like there, you know. Gotta mix up them butter chunks, good. So to this, this is gonna sound weird, but we have half an egg. I made the other half of this batch last night for the purpose of showing some things off today. So we've got half an egg left over. Because what I'm doing is actually making a half batch. So this, this is like my writing of the half batch. It's not the whole batch and I'm not cutting it in half in my head. This is like already cut in half. You doing okay, pal? Let's scrape some of this down and then we're, we will add our vanilla. It's like a very small amount of dough that we're making, so sometimes, it looks like scrambled eggs. Um, the, in the, <laughs> the liquid non-skunk version. <laughs> um, sometimes it's kind of difficult for this to reach the bottom of the bowl when I end up doing small amounts of batter, so I have to scrape it down somewhat frequently. But a moosh. <laughs> so let's see, how much vanilla do we need? Three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use our quarter teaspoon and our half teaspoon. It's like mega important that I not get too much vanilla in this. When I was doing like a prep batch last night, I added a little bit too much vanilla. It had kind of spilled a bit. Oof. And uh, just that tiny extra amount of liquid made the dough a little more difficult to roll out. So now I'm like very aware of the moisture content of this, of this dough. Isn't the transition so good? It's so adorable. Everything you see is through Streamlabs. Um, I use Streamlabs Prime, so everything that you see is from that. Let's see. Actually, get back down there. We are gonna slowly add our flower base in. The new cat frame, yeah, that was that was um, that was Ryan's idea to put that there. I thought it was very clever. Shows how powerful vanilla extract is. I gotta stop snorting into the microphone. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> the 
This is a really nice recipe because I'm trying so hard to go slowly right now because this is such a straightforward, very simple, but also really delicious recipe that takes a lot less effort than some other types of cookies, especially because these are like roll and cut and bake type cookies, which are usually kind of, you know, time consuming and take a lot of effort. But the dough is just so easy to put together that it really doesn't feel like that much more effort to go through all like the cutting and everything. I would say this is like, this is like the chocolate chip cookies of cutout cookies because it's so simple. <laughs> You're probably fine, Vanilla, as long as you stick to anything that doesn't involve baking. No baking, no no sugar allowed. Unless someone, wait, unless someone tries to do something like make a vanilla salad. <laughs> Who would make a vanilla salad? <laughs> vanilla leaf salad, that sounds, okay. If I feel like that is like some sort of fictional food that would be in an RPG and it sounds like it would be really cute. Let's you start with a Caesar salad and top it with vanilla ice cream. Hey, it's Bandito. How are you? Welcome, welcome. It's going well. We've got our dough mostly put together at this point. I'm just gonna give it another thorough mix. Oof, oof, oof. There we go. <laughs> if I randomly laugh, it's because I'm reading what you're all saying. I'm not just randomly laughing over here, I promise. <laughs> this looks pretty good. I usually have to get like way up on my tiptoes to see like the inside of the bowl <laughs> because of where it is on the table. How, oh, there's, I'm just trying to think of like, I'm like having to stop. Like, this is a very important question. Um, I'm trying to basically think of all the different ways that writing, that writing, that laughing is written in like manga, where you've got like, <laughs> and then you've got like, <laughs> it's all like F U, F U, F U. Um, and then there's just like, just loud ha 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 ha. It is a very important question. Do an evil snicker. Wait, like is, does, does, sorry, I have like a hair, like right here, it's driving me bonkers. Um, does foo 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 count as an evil snicker? Cause that's usually pretty, pretty evil. <laughs> Otherwise I could be just like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I've never tried that in my life. Anyway, we've got this and we've got some dough. And when I was making, when I was making the um, like prep batch last night, I forgot about chill time. So I had to stay up for like two hours longer than I meant to because this was supposed to be chilled, whoopsie. But 
That's why I prepare. Everything would have been totally messed up if I hadn't done like a prep batch. You will see what I mean shortly. <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna take all this and just kind of chuck it in the middle. Well, actually, we kind of spread it. We're gonna spread it out a little bit. It'll make it easier to roll it out. So what we're doing right now is we have. We have plastic wrap down and we're going to roll this out on the plastic wrap because the dough gets really difficult to work with when it's frozen and yet it's best to cut the cookies out of the frozen dough. So the original recipe author said, well, if we just freeze it or chill it while it's rolled out, then you don't have to worry about rolling it out when it's too firm. And then you can just immediately start cutting out your cookies. Oh, I think, I think you're all gonna really like the cookie cutters that I have because they're very tiny. All right. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> So let's see, I kind of want to keep it like kind of a rectangle, honestly. This is one of those rolling pins that ends up stopping a certain height above the surface so that your dough can end up being the proper, the proper thickness, if you need it to be a certain thickness. You can see how gummy this is, which is why it's like very difficult to just take it straight from the mixer and start cutting things out because they're just gonna fall apart. should be close. Yes, you have a question. So why do you not flour that rolling pin to stop it from sticking? I could, but number one, it wasn't recommended. Like it, it literally wasn't mentioned at all in the, um, the recipe. And number two, I was kind of concerned that if I floured it, it would make the cookies too dry and they would crack when they were in the oven. Because this is kind of, it's kind of a wet dough, but when we bake it for 10 minutes, it gets pretty crispy on the sides. So that's why I opted to not do it. I don't think that I would say like, I wouldn't say like, oh, it's not recommended. You should never do it. Your cookies are disgusting if you try that. Like I do it with other things, just not this particular recipe. It just turns the cookies vile. Just disgusting. Absolutely vile. Disgusting. There's a very, there's a very fine line that you walk when it comes to the flour amount of cookies and any more would make it disgusting. <laughs> I'm not a professional. Please don't, please don't look to me for professional advice. What are you talking about? Look at that professional setup. Oh, yeah. Absolutely a professional. Wah, wah. See how soft it's getting? Look at me, I'm a professional. Oh, 
Ooh, yeah. Is that, is this the same thing? Is this? It has these, which are, they're kind of like, how would I describe it? Spacers. What are those? What are those weight bars that you pick up that are heavy? Barbells. Barbells. <laughs> weight bars. <laughs> barbells. Heavy they look weight like bars. they look like the discs on the heavy weight bars. <laughs> but you can. Which are also referred to as weights. <laughs> good grief! No, I thought there was a different word for the. They're plates. Plates. Oh, just keep rolling the dough. <laughs> just, just roll the dough. Well, there we go. Okay. So there's our, there's our beautiful, even thickness. This is one quarter inch, by the way, which is six millimeters. So all we have to do is I'm gonna take another layer of plastic wrap. <laughs> Bar okay, yeah. I do the gyms. I go to the places with the heavy stuff. So when you have the dough at this point, all rolled out. You want to pop it into. Oh no, my big old fingernail just took a chunk out. You want to pop this in the fridge for a minimum of like two hours. And then. What so you could we'll all... be sitting here for two hours while that dough cools. Whoa, who would have thought that I prepared some dough prematurely so that it's like time travel. All right. Boom. Well, I folded it the wrong way. There. Good gravy. Okay, so you end up with your, your sad floppy pizza crust. And then, wow, wow. Two hours minimum later, this is a quarter batch because I don't think it's personally necessary to make lots of cookies. I mean, for the purpose of this, of the, uh, of the panel. So here's our gross looking weird parchment stuff. This has been in the fridge since last night. This has been chilled for 10 hours, I think. I'm just gonna throw this in the trash. Yeah, so this has been chilled for about, for about 10 hours. And I will show you, check out how cute these are. We've got, we've got a pig. And then we've got a cat. I really like the cat. We have an owl. And a turkey. <laughs> I just find putting a turkey in here just very comical. I never would have thought of putting a turkey in here. And then we have a rabbit.
so those five are from in case in case you want some of your own because they're super tiny and cute this is by fox run it's their set of mini animal cookie cutters fox run i just found them on amazon so the dough is turkey colored the owl is pretty cool isn't it i think it's a really tidy clever design kitchen we have so many cookie cutters on top of this no, this is more. like give the beginning more. of give the cookie cutter cookie cutters. <laughs> actually you know it'd be great if i put these on our baking tray hmm hey bonnie yes can you yeah i just need to flop this and you're not even visible, know, honestly. Stay over here. Just the way I like it. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Thank you. This is done, right? Yeah. I'm done with the bowl of egg. There we go. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes. Yes. Oh, it was like an all season set? Oh, that's cool. Cause sometimes if it's something season, you gotta go out and buy like one cookie cutter because all you have is numbers and letters for some weird reason. Yeah, these, these come out super, super nice when the dough is really cold. If you don't want to put them in the fridge for, um, for that long, then you can freeze them for usually about a quarter of the time. And that's like a general rule with, with, with things. That's why I'm always like, with a lot of the cookie streams, that's why I pop stuff in the freezer all the time because it greatly reduces the amount of time that we have to wait for them to be ready. So if something suggests being frozen or being chilled for an hour, for example, then you can get away with putting it in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. The key is just making sure that in a recipe noting whether it says freeze or chill because freeze means freezer and chill pretty much always means refrigerator do i have a rat cookie cutter no i don't actually let's see what else uh, let's do another owl we'll kind of do this in order so we end up with like an even amount of all the different animals a rat cookie cutter would be really cute. Juicy Pro? What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, wait, here's a pig. We're going to do the pig next. And honestly, the cutting of these and decorating them is what takes the longest out of everything. <clears throat> oh wait, I wanna do like this. I wanna put them like that, yeah. This is completely arbitrary, by the way. You can put cookies on your tray however you like. No, they must be in perfect rows, <laughs> in order. Alphabetical order by animal type. Those are not in alphabetical order. I know, I'm doing a really bad job. That's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, they bake, they, they actually start to get a little bit brown around the edges at 10 minutes. And we're going to flip them at five. So like, 
cutting and decorating takes longer than the bake time itself. Well, that's what I think is really enjoyable about it. They're actually really good for um, anybody who likes baking for the sake of baking, like, you know, gingerbread houses and decorating cookies and things like that. Um, this would be totally up your alley because you can see how fast it is to get the dough together, but you really get to take the time to make them look cute afterward. Let's put them in order. Let's go, let's, I went like this and this and rabbit and cat and turkey. There. <laughs> Just a nice tanning session. The other, um, I have other shapes as well that came with the same set, but those four were like noticeably larger. So that's why I stuck to these small ones. But the larger ones are like a duck like sort of like a rubber ducky and like a gazelle and a scotty dog and a cow. Wow, I can't believe I actually remembered those. The cow is like huge. The cow is like, is like the size of like two owls. So I was like, no, it's gonna be, I can't, I can't tell how many cookies I'm gonna make out of this right now. And I want it to be, I want them all to be about the same size for the purpose of this. So, cow goes in the box. It is a really, it is a really random assortment. It's like, kind of farm, forest, pet mix? It's turkey that throws me off. <laughs> My apologies to anyone who like joins the stream like right now and hears it's turkey that throws me off. If they're cracked on the top, that's like totally fine. because it's just gonna end up being covered up anyway. Foxes scream, don't they? Don't they make yipping sounds or they yell a lot or? Yeah, we're making cookies. <laughs> That's such involved typing. Mythics. It looks like writing in code. Unhinged jaw and scram. Here we go. Let's see if we could get a few more out of this.
It just gets soft so fast. Ah. Zest of life screaming is uh, my new favorite thing. <laughs> Zest of life screaming? This, I think, is actually a little bit too flat. There we go. Flip around, there we go. So these aren't gonna pop out quite the same way. We're gonna have to take these and then peel the, uh, the remainder of the dough away. Whoops. The rabbit ears get really difficult to get out. Oh no. Poof. Definitely not going to use this owl, it's way too thin, but I'll use the rest. Oh, rabbit ear, no. Oh dear. See, it's just kind of a hot mess at this point because the dough gets almost kind of melty. Get up, come here. Thankfully, the icing that we make covers a lot of mistakes. So here's what we've got now. Here's what we've got now. I'm like, it's getting so melty. Should I try to get any more out of this? Nah, it's getting mega melty. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to pop this into the oven for five minutes. This is preheated to 350. Okay. So at this point, we don't have to worry about this anymore. Because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make we're going to make some icing for our cookies. The stuff that makes them look super duper classic. Oh, thank you. So for this, we end up using our whisk attachment instead of the beater we're making a royal icing for this which is just all sugar water and meringue powder which is dried egg whites i think it's more than dried egg whites though i think it's literally like a lot of cornstarch and some sugar and a bunch of egg whites yeah powdered sugar is like the very first ingredient but this is necessary in order to make sure that our 
icing has some structure and stays together and doesn't just turn into a messy, drippy pile of sugar water. So, hmm. hey Bunny, can you get me another one of these? Or you can get me a smaller one. Yeah, that's fine. It's perfect. That was like totally perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So what we're gonna do first things first, we'll get our sugar in there. There we go. So it's about about a cup and a third of sugar, which is 160 grams. I love the smell of baking too. Oh my goodness, it's so nice, especially like if you bake something and then you leave your place for a little while and you come back in. So like the smell is like renewed basically. So 160. That's 50. I have to like triple that. <laughs> it's just this mountain that won't stop. Nine sixty. Okay. There we go. By the way, this is the clip that we're using for it. It's pretty old, but they're really cute. It comes in a set with hedgehogs and gray wolves. Super cute. But we're gonna dump this in here. There we go. And then we've got one tablespoon of our very vital meringue powder, which we're running low on right now, actually. Get that in there. And then, I was super clever and I got some water first so I wouldn't have to go over to the sink during the stream. So we need three tablespoons of water. This can vary. If you live in a dry climate, you could need double this. So we're gonna turn we're gonna turn this on pretty high and just let it run for a good minute or two. I'm also gonna have to scrape it down in the middle. Oh, thank you! Oh my goodness. Why did I do that? Because it was a microwave! Don't open the microwave! So we're just gonna take these and rotate them. They're looking really nice so far. And then we're going to time it for five more minutes. I'm gonna scrape this down for a minute. It's actually pretty thick. Did I end up doing two tablespoons instead? I'm gonna put a little more water in this. Mixy, 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 there we go. Let's do one more tablespoon. We want it to be a bit runny.
There we go, that's a lot better. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna dye this, we're gonna dye half of it pink, and then we're gonna keep the rest of it white. And we also have some of these. I believe they're pronounced non-parels. Let's see how this looks. We've got about three and a half minutes left on the oven. Yeah, this is much better. I'm just gonna let that drip for a bit. Sprankers, sprankers, sprankers. I've kind of developed like a little bit of a collection of sprankers. It makes me really happy. All right, we're gonna let that, let that go. Ooh. There we go. It feels so weird, I'm like so liberated. I'm used to this cord hanging from here and connecting around the side. So I always have to be like, <laughs> but now I can like, I can like move around and it's pretty exciting. <laughs> So we're just going to kind of, yes, are these kinds of cookies always traditionally pink? Yeah, um, they usually are, half of them are white and then the other half are pink and they're all in the same bag together and they usually have some kind of sprinkles on them, usually non-parels or um, I don't think I've ever seen like actual, what are they called, jimmies? The longer sprinkles, I don't think I've ever seen those on them, but usually non-parels of some kind. I went for rainbow ones. Freedom! Ta -da -da. So where's my, here's our scale. And I'm just going to There we go. Um, I am just going to weigh this out. We're gonna weigh all this out and then we're gonna split it in half and dye half of it pink. And I get to show off my really ridiculously powerful food dye. Oh my goodness, it's, it's so strong. <laughs> I have to add just like a smidgy bit of it in order to get pink. Oops. So this is... ...178. Oop. Hey, bunny. Can you divide 178 by two for me? I'm not gonna math. I'm not, that's not my job. 89. 89. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Oh wait, I'm gonna use this. <gasps> mm -mm. Okay. I'll pop them over here for a second. and I will show these off in a bit. They look really good though. Um, here, off, there. Um, where's my second bowl? Oh, I know. I was using it to measure the sugar. So, 89. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just 
nice to have an equal amount of both. This is way too much for all of them anyway. That's pretty good. We'll do it like that. By the way, the cinnamon smell in here is amazing. Super good. They're kind of like, they're kind of like a sugar cookie infused with cinnamon. That's kind of what they smell and taste like. So I use AmeriColor. It legit is a, it's a really good brand. Um, I learned about it through reading a lot of blogs by professional cake makers and, and bakers and things like that. So, I'm like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to add too much at one time, so I'm gonna kind of like add a half a drop. There we go, like like that much. Can you flip the camera for me? Can you? <laughs> it's, I'm I'm watching this on a lag, so it's really hard to tell. But you should be able to see pretty quickly, like how absurd a half a drop is. Sort of a strawberry milk color, which I love strawberry milk, by the way. Super quick random question. Do people tend to prefer chocolate milk or strawberry milk? Like what is your preference? I feel like strawberry milk drinkers are like unsupported, few and far between. Yeah, you would say chocolate. I know what I like. Straub, there we go. Team Straub. Team Straub. All right, so here are our two icing Any colors. Oh. Oh, strawberry milk is really good. Um, I usually like it with like Hershey's strawberry syrup. I usually like that way. I haven't had it. I haven't had it. Oh, forever. I haven't had the powder for a long time. I usually would go for the syrup. Um, but can I touch this? Can I touch it? Mm, it's still a little hot. But what I can do, oh, I'm gonna do this thing that you're able to do, where you take the paper and you put it onto the drying rack. I can do it. Aha. Check it out. There we go. Kind of trying to make it a little more tidy. There we go. Da -da -da -da. Kind of upside down. It's pretty easy to make. <gasps> it is strawberry season. Oh, I want real strawberry milk now. I didn't even know that. I didn't think about that being a thing, but I really want that now. So this is how easy peasy this is. This is super easy. We've got, we've got our rainbow nonpareils. Let me just move my kitchen mat a little bit over here. There we go. So we've got our non else And honestly, you could just take them and just dump them in the cup, honestly. Cup, I say, I mean the lid. But you really don't even need that much for this. And then you can just like set it off in the corner. So here we go, this is the fun stuff. This is the fun part. 
let's kind of move these gradually over here. I'm just gonna plop them right back here on the uh, on the paper. Because I have, I actually have a finished batch all stacked together to show off to everybody. You just hold the cookie and really carefully, it feels kind of like playing like a game of operation or something. You just dunk the, the face of the cookie right into the icing and And there you go. And then you just take a few of these. Blam, blam, blam. And there you go. It's super simple. Yeah, it's basically fondue cookie. Aw, thank you, Katona. I think, I think that regardless of how they turn out, there's just something very charming looking about them. Like they could, I could do a messy job and I think it would still look kind of cute. Someone says it reminds them of Dunkaroos. <gasps> I love Dunkaroos. I haven't had them forever. Oh, now I want some Dunkaroos. The pink ended up quite pastel this time. I was like so careful. I didn't want it to end up being red that I kind of like. Underpinked it. Yeah. Underpinked it. Underpinked. I kind of underpinked it. The uh, the other batch that I have to show off is uh, more pink. definitely more pinked. If you want, like you can wait a bit if you feel like um, having a smoother surface of the icing basically this ends up being a little bit um, bubbly right after it's been mixed up so if you leave it for like a good 15 minutes or so then the bubbles will go away and then you can dunk the cookies afterward if you don't want bubbles in your cookies um I remember they tried to have Dunkaroos make a comeback a couple years ago, and they were on shelves in stores. I remember seeing them, but I don't know if that was just sort of like a, like a swan song, the, Dun the Dunkaroos swan song, where it was like one last hurrah, and no one, no one decided to keep them. One last dunk. One last dunk. I feel like I missed out because I've actually never had Dunkaroos. That's horrible. That's horrible. Usually the longer you wait for the, uh, the icing to drip off, the less, the less overflow you get. I feel like if I, if I don't wait, I'm just like, that looks good, put it down. Oh. It just kind of slides off the sides of the cookie. Explain why you're doing the non-curls after each cookie. Not oh, that's a good point. Yeah, did they hear that? You still have your mic off? Sorry, explain why you're doing the non pareils after each cookie you dunk, not all at the end. See, wow, see, see, it's important for you to keep your mic on. Um, that's a very good point. I, when I was doing the test batch last night, I dunked them all at once. No, this was the, my practice batch from two weeks ago. Um, I dunked them all at once. And then I went back and tried to put the non pareils on the first cookies, but they had already, the top had dried. So the non pareils started bouncing off of them instead of actually sticking to the icing itself. 
I've learned like a lot. I've learned a lot about animal cookies over these past couple of weeks. I will say. You take the cookies and dip them into milkshakes. Hello. Yeah, the icing got too dry because it had hardened and everything had bounced off. Only the ones at the end had gotten any non pareils on them, really. And how long does it take for these to dry to be ready to be eaten? Um, I mean, if you, if you really want it to seem like they're done, you can give it like an hour. The inside will still be a little bit damp. Um, really, if you, if, you, if you do anything with royal icing that is going to be stacked on top of itself, or why'd I do that? I'm just, I'm just spacing out. You want one wait? There you go. <laughs> For you. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like a blob. <laughs> you can't even see the animal shape anymore. It's just all sprinkles. <laughs> oh, it's going to taste like chemicals so badly. I'm trying to. Get this cat's butt in the icing. You love it? Oh, good. <laughs> Ow, I almost got a pain in my side from laughing too hard. Oh it's my goodness. It's not enough sprinkles, it needs more. Um, I was gonna say, I was going to say that um, it's best to wait like a good 24 hours. Usually, um, it's considered fully cured after a 24 hour period. But if you're in a rush, then if you, if, you, if you really want this like right now, like you can totally have it in like an hour. Like, like this one could be in an hour. <laughs> oh, I'm not dipping far enough. My brain is busy trying to estimate amounts of time. There we go. Look, there's a sprinkle already in that one. Can you fridge or freezer cure them? Yeah, you totally could. Oh, thank you for the raid, Scott Dirk. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the raid. The only thing about, the only thing about freezer curing stuff when you pop something into a freezer to make it like dry faster, for example, is that depending on what it is, you could end up losing some of the shine off of it. Ironically, I feel like I've had good luck with freezing, um, freezing royal icing. Like you don't want to freeze chocolate, for example, because it'll dull the shine. Um, so it's best to have it like air dry, but, um, Royal icing won't have that kind of, it won't, it won't look worse if that's a concern. Because royal icing tends to dry a bit matte anyway. That bunny has a naked spot on their back. The owls are actually the most fun to dunk because they have like, they have the most reliable shape. <laughs> it's probably because it's all like compact and symmetrical. This one is very upsetting. One. The sprinkle one. I'm, I'm just like, look at this pattern. Womp. <laughs> Do 
Too bad that wasn't a sheep cookie. Too bad that wasn't a sheep cookie? Yeah, because then it could have been the black sheep of the animal cookies. <laughs> Boo. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm like really having to like push these down in there to get them dunked. Cameron. There we go. What's next on the agenda? It's a group art tour, right? I believe. It's the fabulous turkey of the bunch. These are great, these are awesome. Um, with the practice batch that I made a couple of weeks ago, I actually made them a little bit too thick by accident and I think they were even better. I made them like, like a half an inch thick instead and they were super duper good and they were a little bit soft in the middle. It was fantastic, but these are also really good. They've got a nice crunch. So you've got a bunch of turkeys and one peacock. Aww. That's a cute idea. That's a super cute idea. That's correct? Okay, cool. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That sounds exciting. The only thing that's a little bit of a bummer about the non pareils on wet icing is that they can have, like the dye can have a tendency to bleed. So it's not always the tidiest looking thing. You might end up with some, um, you might end up with some, some lines and streaks across some of the icing and it doesn't look, it doesn't look as cute as it could, but. It's just a one thing to be mindful of, especially if you're choosing things that have a lot of dye in them, like reds and purples. Those have a tendency to bleed quite a bit. This cookie, there you go. Always the turkey's causing problems. Refused. I. Hmm. Hmm. You know, that's a really good point. This is the way that was suggested in the in the recipe itself. So I didn't think about using any other alternative way. But how would I do it? I would probably be. My concern would be like. If I used an icing tube, would it run off of the edges really bad? But then would that mean that I should make a well with like thicker royal icing and then flood it with like a thinner icing? The great questions of our time. This is a lot of fun though, I will say. Like I've done this like three times in the past couple weeks and this this is really, really fun. If you have an opportunity to try the recipe at some point, I highly recommend it. Just look up Sally's Baking Recipes, Animal Cookies, and it should be like right at the top of your search results.
just a couple more and we're almost done. By the way, I just want to say that I really, really appreciate all of you for sticking around while I putz around with, with cookies and such. It means a lot. And you are a wonderful company. My hands are like so gloopy. <laughs> Let me munch on them. If, if, if everybody wanted a cookie, I would so give you all a cookie. I would 100% open a cookie portal and give you a cookie. There we go. Munch. There we go. So. Ooh, do we get to time travel again? We're going to time travel again. It was fun baking with you. Almost wanted to their helping. Oh, thank you so much, furry badass. That is a badass name, by the way. Furry badass. By the time, by the time they have a chance to set, you end up getting this. Da, 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 da. Let me wash my hands for a second and we can take a closer look at them so I can show you. By the way, um, if you really like watching baking or if you want to hang out in the future, um, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash catmint. <laughs> 